When we talk about the self-reliant Africa, we mean the Africa that is able to be able to run on its own without depending on the foreign aids, overseas aids, the Africa that should be able to put down the agenda on the table and then to be able to solicit funds on its own and be able to move that agenda forward. So the issue of healthcare financing is quite very important and very relevant for the African continent. To come up with innovations, creative ideas that will help the continent to be able to come up with funding mechanism which are self-sustained, which will be able to run the health industry to the next level as we move forward to implement the Sustainable Development Goals agenda. This has never been easy. So in Tanzania, what we have tried to do is to come up with different models which we feel it will empower the primary health care facilities so that they can be able to run on their own, to be able to self-sustain and also to be able to become more creative and innovative in the betterment of the healthcare industry. One of the things which you have tried to do is the issue of the direct facility financing. Initially, we used to send money to the district medical officer office and the other were the ones to send the money down to the uh, primary healthcare facility level. But this brought a lot of challenges. One of the biggest challenges was about the equity but it killed creativity completely because everything the frontline workers had to wait for the district medical officer to decide on their own. But when we started the direct health facility financing, this revitalized the creativity and also brought more autonomy to the people at the community and also at the primary health care facility level. You know, there's an interface between the community and the health facility level, which works very well. We have the health facility governing committee, which is composed by the members from the community, but at the same time by members from the health facility management team. So these two, they join together to formulate what we call the health facility governing committee. This has been as instrumental in implementation of various programs in the country. There is no single transaction can move forward at the primary care facility without endorsement of this organ. So this is a very important organ. So with the directors for city financing, it created more autonomy. It created more ownership of health facility governing committee, so as a community. The other thing which is very important to understand is the introduction of health facility reduced couple of bureaucracy. Initially, one had to consult the district office for procurement of even small, small uh, commodities or goods. But with this new approach, everything now can be procured at the uh, primary care facility. But of course, we have introduced some thresholds, the ceiling of certain amount of money which needs to be approved by the district office. And we believe as we go along, we'll be able to raise that threshold so that we can empower more the people at the primary care facility level. And the advantages which we have had or the achievement which we have achieved so far has been, one, the planned preventive maintenance for small equipment, the rehabilitation of some of the buildings has been very successful because initially everything had to wait up until the district executive director decides. But now things have changed. The other thing which has changed is that the quality of health services has improved tremendously as there is a timely procurement of medicine and health commodities which initially seemed to be a very big challenge. So we believe this is uh, one of the things. The way forward, we need to sustain this. How do we sustain? We have to make sure that we have a continuous supportive supervision 
we have for mentorship as these two approaches are very important in ensuring that the fidelity of implementation remains high. What is fidelity of implementation? This is simply the degree to which an intervention is implemented as per program design. We have seen a couple of uh, programs and projects in Africa succumbing, not simply because they were poor, but it is because the people were entitled to implement it, they didn't implement up to the expectation. So we have this evaluation mechanism trying to evaluate the process and we are using the fidelity of implementation as one of the entry points into the process evaluation. We look into what are the moderating factors and uh, in this context we are talking about being trained, what were the type of training, the guidelines provided and policies being in place. And also we look into the adherence factor. In the adherence factor we look into the context, we look into the duration, the frequency. These are the key components in there. But apart from that we also decided to make sure that we use the theory of change because there is a theory of change so much can be learned and so much can be uh, through the causal pathways the causal pathways between the inputs and also the outcome at that juncture i'd like to thank you everybody for listening to me and i welcome any contribution